Hello, good Thursday, and glad to have you with us on this 22nd day of June. We're going to be talking about your weather, past, present, and future. Past, on this day in our weather history, in 1990, severe weather was bearing down on eastern Kentucky, Laurel, Clay, Leslie counties, seeing twisters, three tornadoes touched down, and one which struck an entertainment center and spared all 400 people of any injuries as it ripped the roof off. There's something you can quote in history of Eastern Kentucky and the state of Kentucky as well weather-wise each and every day as there is a different weather system or scenario that seems as though we are talking about each and every day. And that will be the case tonight. An impending cold front approaching that's going to interact, of course, with a lot of tropical moisture from the remnants of tropical storm Cindy. We are under a flash flood watch. And I'm also very glad to report to you that literally as I just set down a new update from the National Weather Service, and it's a little better news in regards to total rainfall. Trends have been backing off. Computers have been uh, agreeing with each other, so, so to speak, more so. And I've got rainfall estimates that are a little better than what we thought even just a couple of hours ago, certainly 24 hours ago. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods. Some folks in some isolated areas could see some localized, very heavy downpours from time to time, and it could result in some serious flooding issues. but and a general consensus, it's going to be a little less of a serious scenario than what we perhaps had expected. I'll go through it in more detail in just a few moments. 17 indictments, including a McGoffin County man who's facing several, several years um, for not standing trial the first time. We'll also have a couple of significant announcements in regards to sports here in McGoffin County, specifically a free elementary football camp that I'll be glad to share with you in just a few seconds, and free sports physicals and other uh, details about an injury prevention clinic coming up. You'll want to mark both of those on your calendar if you've got kids or students that are interested. And a whole lot of news and information to get to before we leave you this evening. Only a little else will we talk about besides those uh, topics tonight. The Kentucky State Police did confirm to us this evening that they are still conducting a murder investigation uh, into the death of a man in Belfry. Uh, they received a call uh, just yesterday, and that being to the Kentucky State Police who responded, as well as Mingo County deputies to Turkey Creek Road in Pike County. They did get a search warrant. They did locate an unidentified person buried in a shallow grave. The body has been sent to Frankfurt for an autopsy and a positive ID. But meanwhile, 31-year-old Jennifer Blankenship of Turkey Creek and 28-year-old Oki Hinkle of West Virginia, they were both taken into custody at the scene for outstanding warrants unrelated to the incident but Blankenship and Hinkle were later char charged after being lodged into the Pike County Detention Center. Jennifer Blankenship charged with the murder and Hinkle being charged with tampering with physical evidence. We've got more details expected possibly very, very soon. A free elementary football camp coming to McGoffin County. Free sports physicals, as I mentioned, and right after this, several indictments returned by an area grand jury. Stay tuned. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Get your $10 tickets now for the 14th annual and perhaps biggest community day yet. Featuring the incredible Rhonda Vincent and the Rage and other headliners like the Dave Adkins Band, the Edgar Loudermilk Band with Jeff Autry, Toddy Preston and the Black Powder Express, and many, many, many more. And all the food, fun, games, and fabulous prizes that you can stand. All for just 10 bucks, and kids 12 and under, they get in for free. Community Day in the Rainy Park in Sagersville is Saturday, August the 19th. Uh, hey guys, my bill's a lot higher than it should be. I thought I got a great deal. The old fine print bit. 
Your great deal doesn't include financing, which is usually 25 bucks or more. But the ad said that every network is within a 1% difference of each other. 1% means network reliability, not coverage. So I'll drop calls? Nope. You can't drop calls if you don't have service. Yeah, we both have Appalachian Wireless. Great network reliability and actual coverage. I'm switching to Appalachian Wireless. Better service with bigger savings and less fine print. Tom McFarland. We all know that times are hard. Jobs are scarce. Most people that I know are struggling to support their families and make it through each day. Now imagine that you get seriously hurt while working on the job and the insurance company for your employer refuses to pay wages and benefits while you are injured and cannot afford to pay medical expenses, household bills, and put food on the table to support your family. I can help. If you are being wrongfully denied workers' compensation benefits that you rightfully deserve, then give me a call and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal, and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan, since 1904. Make your way to Broadway Auto Sales and Paint Steel for this 2013 Jeep Wrangler, wheels, tires, tow, and more. And check out this big, roomy Tundra Crew Max with the big 5.7 liter and a like new 2016 Ford Escape all wheel drive loaded up. Just look for the big gorilla and yellow sunglasses. Broadway Auto in Paintsville. In all, at least 17 people were indicted this week by a sitting Johnson County grand jury. That includes at least one McGoffin County man and several others. Several serious charges, drug related, flagrant non support, and other counts. Justin Litchfield, with an unknown address, was indicted on several counts, including fleeing or evading police in the first degree, which carries one to five years, as well as DUI, second offense with aggravating circumstances, operating a motor vehicle on a suspended license, speeding at least 22 miles per hour over the limit, and failure for the owner to maintain required insurance, second offense or greater. The complaining witness, Trooper Dustin Thompson, testified before the grand jury that he was operating a motor vehicle with the attempt to elude or flee the trooper in excess of 30 miles per hour at times. He was ordered held on a $5,000 bond. Christopher Kistner of Mealy, Kentucky was indicted on account of promoting contraband in the first degree. That's a Class D felony carrying one to five years. With the grand jury saying that on or around January the 17th of this year, he was introducing Clonzapam to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center illegally. The testifying witness before the grand jury, once again Trooper Dustin Thompson, with Kistner ordered held on $5,000 cash. Trooper Thompson also testified before the Johnson County Grand Jury in the case of Robert Housinger of Staffordsville, who was subsequently indicted on possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, which carries a fine of one to three years and public intoxication of drugs for being under the influence of drugs and in the possession of methamphetamine on February the 7th in Johnson County. A $5,000 bond was issued in his name. James D. Lewis of Louisa was indicted on possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, carrying one to three years, as well as being in possession of a prescription not in its proper container and public intoxication of drugs. On January the 4th, he's accused of being in possession of methamphetamine as well as being in possession of prescription narcotics not in their proper or original containers. The complaining witness, Trooper Dustin Thompson of the State Police, also a $5,000 bond issued in Lewis's name. Johnson County Sheriff's Deputy Bill Mead testified before the grand jury who indicted Adam Rohr of Boone's Camp on possession of a controlled substance in the first, fleeing and evading police in the first, wanted endangerment in the first degree, all carrying sentences of one to five years, as well as operating a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol in the first degree with aggravating circumstances. 
possession of drug paraphernalia, disregarding a stop sign, and speeding 26 miles per hour over the speed limit related to an incident that took place on the 14th of August of last year when Rohr was said to be in possession of methamphetamine and attempted to elude or flee Deputy Brad Caldwell with the Johnson County Sheriff's Department. He was also in possession of a straw and a light bulb used for smoking or ingesting methamphetamine and was ordered to be held on $5,000. Deputy Meade also testified before the grand jury in the case of Hank Pelfrey of Langley, who was indicted on trafficking in a controlled substance in the first methamphetamine, trafficking in a controlled substance in the first degree, less than 10 dosage units with a firearm enhancement on both of those counts, possession or use of drug paraphernalia, and DUI in the first offense, as well as possession of an open alcoholic beverage container. Pelfrey was said to have been in possession of methamphetamine with a firearm, actually two different firearms in his possession, digital scales, and more than $1,000 in cash when authorities believe he was attempting to traffic in methamphetamine as well. He also had in his possession a quantity of prescription pills, an altered spoon, and two altered pipes, and was issued a $10,000 bond, and faces up to 10 years on each of the trafficking charges. Paintsville Police Officer Keith Maynard brought a case before the grand jury against Tammy Lamaster of Paintsville, who was indicted on possession of a controlled substance in the first, theft by unlawful taking for shoplifting under $500 and public intoxication. Grand jury charges that on around November the 7th of last year, she was in possession of methamphetamine and caught shoplifting or stealing several items from the Dollar General store in Paintsville while under the influence of drugs. Several individuals were indicted for flagrant non-support, one being Jason Schaefer of Dayton, Ohio, facing one to five years and a fine of up to ten grand, saying that from September the 1st, 2013 through May the 31st of this year, he failed to pay child support to a female in excess of $12,325. His bond was issued at $5,000 as was a $5,000 bond issued in the name of John D. Byers of Columbus, Ohio, indicted for flagrant non-support for being in arrears of more than $31,571 owed to the mother of his child from April the 1st of 2004 through May the 31st of this year. Jeremy D. Brock of Hillsboro, North Carolina, indicted for failure to pay child support, flagrant non-support, for being in arrears $11,041. Michael S. Green of Springfield, Ohio, indicted on flagrant non-support, as well as being a persistent felony offender in the second degree. He's said to owe more than $8,800 in child support, and he's also indicted for being a persistent felony offender in the second degree for being previously convicted of a prior felony. His bail was set at $15,000 in lieu of the persistent felony offender charge. A McGoffin County man was indicted on four separate indictment warrants, all four charging him with bail jumping in the first degree and for being a persistent felony offender in the first degree as well. Now this goes back to a case that I actually reported on just about a month ago. Roy Keith Allen had been out on bail and was awaiting trial in Johnson County Court on four charges of trafficking in methamphetamine. The Johnson County Sheriff's Department was to present evidence that he had trafficked in methamphetamine on four separate dates, and Allen failed to show up on the day of the trial. So now he is still to face those four counts of trafficking in methamphetamine and being a persistent felony offender in the second degree, and now he will also face the new indictment charges of bail jumping in the first degree, which carries one to five years for each of those counts, and he's now being indicted for being a persistent felony offender in the first degree, which carries an even more enhanced penalty. And unless there is a bond posted for Allen that he could meet, he will stand trial this time as he's already been jailed and lodged back into the regional detention center. He was picked up back in May on the 17th on charges of DUI and other counts and is still in the jail at this time. Johnson County Sheriff's Deputy Bill Mead testified before the grand jury that Thomas Trimble of Fialca sometime on around April the 21st of this year committed the crime of bail jumping in the first degree where in connection with a felony charge he failed to appear at court at a designated time and date. He now faces one to five years on the bail jumping charge. Brandy Payton was said to have committed the crime of assault in the second degree which carries five to ten years for a stabbing of Thurman T.J. Cottle 
by stabbing him with a deadly weapon, namely a knife, on or around February the 7th of 2017 in Johnson County. Peyton was actually jailed on the 10th day of this month. She was arrested then by Sagersville Police Officer Tracy Salyer on a charge of DUI in the second degree with aggravated circumstances and driving on a suspended license. Even though she's already jailed, she was issued a $10,000 bond on the indictment warrant. Brandon Napier of Fialca was indicted on driving on a DUI suspended license second offense with aggravated circumstances. That's a one to five year penalty. As well as DUI second offense within five years, failure to wear seat belts and operating a motor vehicle with expired registration plates. He was said to have committed the offenses on or around February the 2nd of 2016. He was actually jailed on March the 1st of this year and is still lodged in the Big Sandy Jail, arrested in March by Trooper Zach Haney on a probation violation that relates to burglary in the third degree, as well as he was jailed on driving on a DUI suspended license, second offense, and DUI. And two others were also indicted by the same grand jury. We just did not have any accompanying photographs or mugshots to go along with the report, but they were identified in the indictment warrants as, first, Robert B. Weber, Jr. of East Point. He was indicted on flagrant non-support for failing to pay child support from April of 2004 through this May and now owes in arrears of $80,618. He had a bond set at $9,000. And lastly, an Andy Dillon of Wittensville was indicted on criminal possession of a forged instrument in the second degree sometime around or on February the 21st of this year. He was said to have unlawfully been in possession of a forged automobile extended warranty agreement with Cars Protection Plus in an effort to defraud the company, deceive or deprive them of funds. And he also was ordered held on a $5,000 cash bond. More headlines after this. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges to file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls, or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters in Siresville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. Livers or gizzards, gizzards or livers, or you can have both, and you can have them any day of the week, or you can have them for under five bucks when they're Friday special at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. On Fridays, get a liver or gizzard or liver and gizzard dinner for only $4.59, $3.99 after 4 o'clock, only at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville has anything you need to work or play with this summer for pennies on the dollar. Musical instruments, jewelry, electronics, games, and more. Just about anything you can find. And they'll loan you money today on just about anything worth a dollar. Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville. 349 Pawn. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms, complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair. Behavioral Health Services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results, in-house x-ray and pharmacy. And all the caring, knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent. At Hope Family Medical Center. Much more than diesel specialists, Black Smoke Performance is turning out excellent auto body collision paint and repair results with free quotes and estimates on everything from insurance jobs to that ding you got in the driveway. Custom lift kits, bed liners, winches and accessories, and full diagnostics and repair on anything gas or diesel, from brakes to fluid changes to major auto repair. If you want it fixed, lifted, painted, customized, or just maintained, just call on the team at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 100 May Drive, or 349-8785. 
I got a couple of things sports related, and then I'm going to elaborate well, on both of them a little more at a later time. Uh, one we have just finalized, and I'll tell you more about the sponsors uh, and how it's going to work and some more details about the camp and the coaches as well. But I can confirm this, that there's going to be a free elementary football camp for all uh, past and present coming this school year, elementary football players in McGoffin County. The dates have been set, July the 10th, 11th, and 12th. It's going to be an evening camp in case parents would like to attend and be a little cooler on the kids as well. 6 to 8.30, July the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Associate Head Coach and Defensive Coordinator Brian Williams from the University of Pikeville will be there assisting local coaches, and it's going to be a great camp. I've got some information on Coach Williams uh, and the camp in and of itself, and we'll announce that soon and talk about the folks who are sponsoring this to make it free to all elementary football players in McGoffin County. But coming up July the 10th, 11th, and 12th. And on the note of free, McGoffin County High School Athletic Director Neil West forwarded this information and announcement to me earlier today about a preseason sports expo, which is coming up later on in July in Sagersville at the McGoffin County High School. Yeah, the camp is July the 10th, 11th, and 12th. This free preseason sports expo is July the 24th. So I'll be reminding you between now and then, but I wanted to get out there as soon as possible, and especially if uh, parents are out there making plans to get sports physicals this summer for those kids who will need them next year. There's a preseason sports expo sponsored by Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center at the high school Monday, July the 24th at 6 o'clock. They'll have free sports physicals and, injure, and an injury prevention clinic with their new orthopedic surgeon doc, dr donald arms they'll have weight training and injury interception uh, information and more this is free to all mcgoffa county student athletes a lot of other uh, providers are going to be there as well from paul b hall and they hope that students will take and parents will take advantage of this if you have any questions in the meantime you can call paul b hall at 789-3511 the extension is 1229 but right now, July the 24th, McGoffin County High School is the location for a preseason sports expo that will include free sports physicals for all McGoffin County athletes and some other services. First off on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau Community Calendar announcement, birthdays, a happy 10th birthday to Jason Nathaniel Reisner. Love your dad and a host of family and friends. Happy, happy 10th. To Jason Nathaniel Reisner. And I've got a 42nd birthday wish that goes out today, this Thursday, from her husband David, from Austin Howard, and a host of family and friends. A happy 42nd birthday wish to Charlotte Johnson. Happy, happy birthday to you, Charlotte. As we've got our coach from UPike coming to do the football camp. We've also got a UPike football golf outing. They're raising money for the football program with a golf outing that's set for July the 21st at the Green Meadow Country Club in Pikeville. And you can contact Coach Brian Williams, the same one doing the camp, uh, 794-9372. This is a four-person scramble, 100 bucks per person. They'll have uh, prizes for the top three teams, longest drive, closest to the pin, hole-in-one, longest putt, uh, and more. And it will be Friday, once again, July the 21st. Once again, if you're interested in signing up, call Brian today, 794-9372. And one more reminder this week that the McGoffin County High School Class of 82 is celebrating their 35th year reunion on the 24th of this month, which, of course, is in just a couple of days this Saturday. And it's at 5 o'clock at the Ramey Park. If you haven't already, contact classmate Carol Scott Hall. And if you've got a birthday or an anniversary or an announcement coming up and you haven't already, call me or any time that you've got one, just get the information to us and we'll tell everyone about it. It doesn't cost anything. You just have to get it here. Our nightly local and area obituaries are sponsored daily by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, and they have sent me the uh, reminder and announcement in regards to services, which will be held tomorrow for Michael Wayne Francis, Mike Francis, at the age of 58, who passed away earlier this week, survived by his son Michael Dwayne, preceded in death by his son Jeremy Scott. The funeral will be 1 o'clock tomorrow at the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Visitation continues this evening, and burial will take place thereafter at the Francis Family Cemetery on Pricey. 
and Garland Joseph, 78, of Jeffersonville, passed away on yesterday's date, formerly of McGoffin County. He was married to Carrie Wireman Joseph, who survives. Garland's also survived by his son, Mark Anthony, and daughters Donna Daniel, Bessie Literal, and Judy Keaton. Visitation is going to start after 6 o'clock tomorrow. It continues all day Saturday and before services that are set in his honor Sunday at 1, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Tis the season, as they say, with wedding and baby registry at the seasonal shop. And as always, an endless selection of new summer shades and styles and sizes for everyone from design houses of Charlie Page and Mud Pie with all the matching accessories to go along with them. Shoes, jewelry, hats, bags, scarves, and more. And new arrivals weekly with free local delivery. All from Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Just in and just perfectly priced at Gateway Motors, this 2012 Nissan Rogue all-wheel drive and this 2012 Ford Fusion, only $7,900. This 2011 Chevy Cruze loaded up $8,900. And it's a push-pull drag sale going on right now, which means however you can get it in, it's guaranteed to be worth at least $1,000. On this 2010 Nissan Sentra, priced at $7,900, or this 2011 Impala LT, priced under eight grand, and most payments under $200 a month. Come and check out Gateway Motors in Sagersville, 349 cars. Parkway Pharmacy, now open earlier from 8 a.m. until 6 in the evening to better suit your schedule and lifestyle and to help you get better and live a healthier life. And if allergies are bogging you down, they're armed with the very best in over-the-counter relief for adults and your children. Reach owner pharmacist Jesse Rudd and his assistant pharmacist Megan Castle and their staff at 8 o'clock in the mornings or at 349-4400. A tire more than 25% low, about 8 pounds, makes you 3 times more likely and worn out tires 11 times more likely to be in a tire related crash. Don't take your or their safety for granted. Come in for a free inspection, 6 months no interest financing, the best price and best selection at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Hey, we're going to close out on your weather forecast, but I left a few extra minutes for it because we've got a lot to talk about. But as I said earlier at the top of the show, not as much as what we had feared to talk about and not as much rainfall as what we are expecting. And in fact, in just the last hour, recent estimates from the National Weather Service indicate that while we are still under a flash flood watch and still could see some flooding issues, some of which could be serious for some in those low-lying or troubled areas, but nevertheless, Rainfall estimates at this time have backed off just a bit, and it looks as though by early Saturday afternoon, we could see the sunshine return. That's not to say some folks can't get in on some really heavy rain, and some will, but hopefully the totals won't be quite as bad. You can see right now we've just had some light and moderate showers falling throughout much of the afternoon, and we'll continue to see this pattern with a lot of moisture throughout the overnight. Heavy rain is also possible from tomorrow afternoon into early Saturday morning with the remnants of Cindy interacting with a cold front we've been talking about for days, and flash flooding is still a real concern. However, you will notice the latest trends here as we take a look from the National Weather Service in the orange, which encompasses most all of the viewing area. We were in around two and three quarters of an inch. Now, that's an estimate, of course, and an average. Some folks at that time were expected to see maybe less, some even more, but a good 2.775 average was the reading or information just a little earlier this afternoon. Now, however, in this most recent update, well, we're, we're still close to two, two and a half inches on the high scale, but also you'll see McGoffin County, as we often are, right in the middle and split at anywhere from one and a half to about maybe upwards of two and a half inches total rainfall. And that's not to say that we're not going to have another update in a few hours from now that will change, but right now all models are going toward a little lesser of a trend. And once again, that's not to say that in some isolated areas, you might be surrounded by neighbors who have two inches of rainfall, and some folks might get in on much more than that. So the flood watch very well warranted and very well intact for the next several hours. 
Otherwise, showers and patchy fog tonight are low in the upper 60s. Tomorrow, we'll back down to the lower 80s and stay there. Winds out of the southwest, 7 to 16 miles per hour. Right now, an inch to two inches of rain on tomorrow. Saturday, showers ending, hopefully rather sooner than later and early, and becoming at least partly, if not mostly, sunny by the afternoon. Temperature still right around the low 80 mark. And then some unseasonably nice conditions. Mid and low 70s, days on end, starting on Sunday with a lot of sunshine and clear to maybe partly cloudy skies at most. Certainly below average. The McGoffa County Fiscal Court was to meet at 5 o'clock today. We understand Judge Executive Charles Harden was not in attendance, therefore the meeting didn't happen. But that doesn't mean we don't have some information and some statements for you on that topic tomorrow. And I've got a host of other exclusive news for you then. So please join us as we wrap up this week tomorrow night with more of your news today. Thanks for watching.